Thanks for tuning in to Hacker's Reef. Today I'm going to teach you all about culturing your own phytoplankton. I'll show you how easy the entire process is as well as where to get your starter culture and some tips and tricks I've learned from my months of research and some common mistakes to avoid. Welcome back to Hacker's Reef. We're going to go over our supplies really quick. Um, we have here our fertilizer and our nice little syringe that's included with the kit. This is Gillard's F2 fertilizer, which is purposely made for this process, so it's very important. This particular package came with a second bottle, which is helpful if you need a lot of phytoplankton or you make a mistake with your first culture. I ordered this through Amazon, so you get your free shipping if you have Prime. They sent in this box right here. Um, USPS, little bit of a ding on the box. You can see right on this corner. But surprisingly, nothing leaked. Everything came safe and sound. The package shipped directly from the seller, uh, Mercer of Montana. So hats off to them for the good packing job and all your basic components shipped safe and sound. The shipping speed on Amazon was a little confusing. Um, it said it was Prime, but then it looked like it was USPS regular mail. Hopefully they cleared that up on the website, but the good news is that they did ship it in time and it does seem to come here two days. So as long as you order it when it's not freezing cold or ridiculously hot, you should be fine because remember phytoplankton is actually alive. I'll leave a link in the description where you can purchase your own phytoplankton culture. Now remember this isn't a sponsored review or anything, this was just what I found that worked pretty well. Phytoplankton is extremely useful to have for anyone that has a reef tank or breeds fish. It's one of the first links in the food chain. We ordered a quality fertilizer to keep our culture going strong, so we'd always have a fresh batch, but you could just as well order your own bottle just for single use as needed. Fresh Phyto is great for everything from bringing out the colors in your coral, feeding all the pods that live around the rubble of your reef tank and help boost their population. But one of the most important uses of it is to feed rotifers if you're trying to breed fish. Now with these three bottles and a few items probably collecting dust around your house, you'll have everything you need to start your sustainable culture. The important thing about phytoplankton is really the color of the culture. That tells us when it's ready to harvest. Now this bottle has a really nice dark color, which means it's good quality. It's very important to keep your unused phytoplankton refrigerated. Unlike your fertilizer, which you want to store in a cool, dark place, as per the directions on the bottle. Another important thing about the phytoplankton itself is to keep it in the fridge and remember to shake it every day. If the phytoplankton settles on the bottom of the container without you shaking it, it's going to slowly die. Your freshly cultured phytoplankton will probably last a good couple of weeks in your refrigerator and you'll know if anything goes bad because it'll have a funky smell or a bad color. Now let me get on to the next step of how the culture works. You're going to need a measuring syringe. It's going to be very helpful to get your uh, accurate reading for your F2 fertilizer for the culture. My kit came with one, but you can purchase them online on Amazon. I can put a link in the description or uh, your local pharmacy. These are the same sort of syringes in most test kits. Just be careful reusing a test kit syringe because you never know if it has chemical residue inside. Next, you're going to need a culture vessel. This is just a simple container that we're going to make our culture in. You can use pretty much anything you can find around the house. I just had this handy. Uh, two liter bottle, Gatorade bottle, water bottle. I've seen a ridiculous amount of things used. Almost anything will work, as long as it's not some weird shape. Something that's difficult to clean, like a milk jug where things will get stuck in the handle part of it. You want to fill up your container with fresh salt water that matches what's inside your culture that you're starting with. This particular culture started out at 1.020, so you just want to match that with your fresh salt water. I'm using Instant Ocean Reef Crystals, but pretty much anything will get the job done. The culture vessel itself is a really simple device. You can pretty much make it out of spare parts you have around. Um, really all you need is some rigid airline. The airline will help make sure that the bubbles keep the uh, phytoplankton culture good and circulated. Now I'm touching it with clean hands, but be very careful that you don't contaminate it at this point if you have dirty hands. Your rigid airline just simply connects into a regular air hose. Mine's black, that's what I had, but regular clear air hose works. The last thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a hole in the lid so that the air can vent out as it's getting pumped into the chamber. For a little extra protection from contamination, you can just use something like I have here, which is just a small piece of cotton pad. But almost anything works, like a coffee filter or some filter floss, and I just secured it down with some tape. As long as it lets the air escape from the container to stop it from building up pressure and popping, 
you're in good shape. It'll help keep some contaminants out, and that's really all you need. Nothing really super high-tech. This isn't a lab-grade clean room, but something like this will just help you out a little bit. And the only thing that's really important is keeping it reasonably clean while you work. The next thing we're going to need to get this started is an air pump. Now, I have a fairly large air pump here. You don't need something as big. You can get away with a small single port air pump if that's all you have on hand. Now, it's important that you have a functioning check valve installed on your air pump because the last thing you want is your phytoculture to backflow into your air pump, making a huge mess and contaminating your culture. You definitely want to avoid that if you can. Now, you'll notice that I have an air valve hooked up to my pump. This is a really helpful addition. It's going to help you to dial in your airflow so you get just the amount of bubbles to mix your culture and not let it settle while not letting it blast air like a hot tub. This particular air valve is a three-way gang valve which is helpful if you have multiple cultures so you can kind of adjust the air but you don't really need anything that advanced. You can just use a simple one just like this right here which is just your straight through um, air control valve. They're pretty cheap and if you don't have some on hand I'd advise picking some up just because they come in handy for all different projects. Another tip I want to share is using a pre-filter on your air pump. Now when you buy an air pump you're going to see it has some sort of pad down here. Now that's where it draws the air in and it pushes it through the diaphragm inside the pump and that's what's going to get all your air into your culture vessel. Just make sure it's clean and if you have to replace it you can use the same kind of cotton wadding that we used on the exhaust port of our culture vessel right here. If you've done any research into phytocultures before this video you'll see people talk about keeping the environment completely sterile. If we're being honest for a second here the only way that's going to happen is if you have your air intakes running through something like a HEPA filter and a pump this size wouldn't even be able to draw through that. You'd need something with a lot more suction. So. As long as you're not extremely sloppy with your contamination control, you should be in pretty good shape. I've seen people load up phytocultures in bathrooms and kitchens and places that definitely don't have a lot of uh, control over what kind of contaminants you get inside your initial culture. And those seem to work fairly well, so I wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over it personally. Now we're just going to hook up our rigid air line to our air pump. You want to make sure you can get a good control of the airflow. That's why it's important to make sure that the rigid airline is in a good place inside your container. You don't want it jammed against the bottom, but it should be low and to the center of the container. That way that when the bubbles come up, they'll allow you to get the nice water movement that doesn't let your phytoculture settle on the bottom. Now you want to have your airflow pretty good, but not super high. You want like a nice little rolling bubble action coming out of the bottom. Now you can see how it's just coming up like that. You can turn it up a little bit more, but that's about where you want it. Just so that you get a nice amount of movement inside. And really all you're trying to do is just prevent anything from settling. Past that, if you use too much air, you could risk uh, splashing up the top of your container. And that'll just make a mess that you're trying to avoid. Now we're ready to open up the container and add in our F2 fertilizer. This is an important step that a lot of people don't think about and they mess it up by accident. If you're not careful and you just put your lid down with your rigid airline, you could put it on like a dirty surface and that'll let you pick up a lot of contaminant and then once you add the fertilizer, the bad bacteria can take over and crash your culture. Definitely something you want to avoid. Next we're just going to add 5 milliliters of the fertilizer to our culture with the clean syringe we talked about earlier. Now 5 milliliters is a little bit heavy to use with half a gallon of water but you're going to find through testing that certain amounts of the fertilizer will give you better results. It really comes down to the concentration of the individual fertilizer that you're using. It's important to remember that Gillard's F2 is a recipe and not a product. So while all the fertilizer should have the same components, the ratios might be tweaked a little bit and that's why you have to experiment. Still, it's best to start with the manufacturer recommendation just to be on the safe side. Now we'll just cover this up and uh, we don't want to spill it because if you notice we barely use any of it. It's very important that we keep this free from using uh, dirty syringes or anything that could contaminate it. Assuming you don't spoil your fertilizer it's going to last you for a really long time. Now the next step we need is to add our phytoplankton starter culture into our culture. Now you're going to notice that the water is nice and clear because as you remember that's just clean salt water freshly mixed again very important, you never want to use old water. Always has to be nice, freshly mixed salt water. 
Now take a little look at this bottle before we pour it in. Now you can see that it's nice and dark. This is the color that our culture is going to be when it's finished after it's consumed all the fertilizer. The whole process is going to take anywhere between 5 to 12 days, give or take. It really depends on the temperature of the water and how bright the light is that's shining into your culture vessel. You're going to need the temperature at around 78 to 82 degrees. If you don't need a heater, room temperature and the light will pretty much stabilize the temperature for you. Adding in your culture is a little more art than science because you want to make sure that the color of the culture vessel is a light green but not ridiculously transparent or else it'll be really tough. Not super dark or you'll be wasting your time. But uh, let's go ahead and pour this in and see what we get. Hopefully we'll get something that's good that'll show up on camera. Let me just move this out of the way so that we can pour it in easier. Now we see as soon as it hits the water, it's already starting to change color. It's hard to get a real read on the color without the light source. I mean, it looks really dark, but that'll change once we get our lights hooked up and turned on. Now we'll get the rest of the phytoplankton in there and we'll see how it looks. Don't worry about trying to wring out every last drop. With this guide, you'll be able to make gallons of phyto. Now when we check our graduation marks, we can see we're pretty close to the top, but there's still some more room for uh, a little bit of top off salt water. So I'm just going to grab the same salt water that we originally used to fill the container. Again, that's just uh, some 1.020 specific gravity salt water, uh, instant ocean reef crystals. You can use whatever salt mix you have on hand that you trust to use in your reef tank. Let's just get the rest of this water in here to top it off. That'll help make our uh, culture a little bit lighter in overall color to give it more room to grow. Now I would just caution you not to fill it up super high because remember there is that vent hole in the top. And once you get the bubbles going, if you have that water level too high, it's gonna start bubbling out and then you're most likely going to get some contamination, crash your culture, maybe halfway in. I can't really think of a reason that's worth that risk. So just fill up your water, just a reasonable height, and then uh, you'll have a fully functioning phytoplankton culture in about a week. Now that we have our water all topped off, we can go ahead and do another adjustment on our air. It's a little tough to see because we don't have the light hooked up at the moment and the uh, color's a little darker than we expected, but that's okay because it's the first time I'm starting a culture with this particular batch of phyto. Now we can see that the air's starting to go crazy on us like some mad scientist lab. That's a bit too much. You want to dial that back. It's important to remember that we only need the phyto to move around enough that it's going to not settle on the bottom. And we're not trying to agitate it like it's riding a mechanical bull or it's inside a washing machine. That's a pretty decent bubble right there where it's going to get you good circulation but it's not going to go crazy and come out the top. Now that we have everything settled with our culture media, we have our fresh salt water that's been tinted with our culture. We got our fertilizer. The next thing we're going to need is some light. Now, this is what I'm using right here. It's just a simple LED light bulb. I mean, from the dollar store, you can use compact fluorescent, those four foot shop lights, or even some LED strips in a pinch. There's really, as long as you're giving it a good amount of illumination while it tumbles around, you'll be in perfect working order with your culture. I'd avoid incandescent and halogen because they make too much heat and their spectrum's not very useful. In the spirit of the Hacker's Reef channel, I'm just going to use what I have here, which is this beat down looking uh, work lamp. Thankfully, it's not getting entered into a beauty pageant, so it'll light a light bulb just as well as anything else, and it'll get the job done. Now, in addition to this thing looking pretty beat down, it has one other minor issue where it doesn't really want to stand up. That's why we have one little additional tool in our kit that's very helpful, the brick. Now, in my experience, there's not many things you can't solve with a brick. Whether you need to make a light stand up straight, keep a door open, it'll get it done. That's all there is to it. And I won't hold it against you if you use a little classier light. But the spirit of the channel is just get it done with what you have as long as it's safe. Now to quickly recap everything we've learned. Remember that it's important to use rigid airline instead of an air stone. Because an air stone will create micro bubbles that will give you a protein skimmer effect inside and greatly increase your chance of your culture crashing. It's not guaranteed, but you really shouldn't risk it. And rigid airline's the way to go. We also learned that while it's very important to be careful for contamination, you shouldn't be paranoid because with this level of equipment, a sterile lab environment is just not going to happen for most people. And then we learned that you should follow the manufacturer's instructions, but you can also experiment a little and you might get some better results depending on your environment and your goal. Most importantly, keep a backup container of phyto in your fridge in case your culture crashes and you need to restart. 
be sure to leave a comment below and let us know what you're using your phytoculture to feed or if you have any suggestions on things we should expand on with this phytoculture series. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you take a second and give us a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the latest videos with the tips, tricks, and project updates.